Eriador was of old the name of all the lands between the misty mountains and the blue. In the south it was bounded by the grey flood and the glandwin that flows into it above Tharbad. At its greatest, Arnor included all Eriador, except the regions beyond the Loon and the lands east of Greyflood and Loudwater, in which lay Rivendell and Hollin. Beyond the Loon was Elvish country, green and quiet, where no men dwelt. But dwarves dwelt, and still dwelt, in the east side of the Blue Mountains, especially in those parts south of the Gulf of Loon, where they have mines that are still in use. For this reason they were accustomed to pass east along the Great Road, as they had done for long years before we came to the Shire. At the Grey Havens dwelt Círdan the shipwright, and some say he dwells there still, until the last ship set sail into the west. In the days of the kings, most of the high elves that still lingered in Middle-earth dwelt with Círdan, or in the seaward lands of Lindon. If any now remain, they are few. After Elendil and Isildur, there were eight high kings of Arnor. After Iarandur, owing to dissensions among his sons, their realm was divided into three. Arthedain, Rudar, and Cardolan. Arthedain was in the northwest and included the land between Brandywine and Loon and also the land north of the Great Road as far as the Weather Hills. Rudar was in the northeast and lay between the Etten Moors, the Weather Hills, and the Misty Mountains, but included also the angle between the Horwell and the Loudwater. Cardolan was in the south, its bounds being the Brandywine, the Grey Flood, and the Great Road. In Arthurdine, the line of Isildur was maintained and endured, but the line soon perished in Cardolan and Rudar. There was often strife between the kingdoms, which hastened the waning of the Dúnedain. The chief matter of debate was the possession of the Weather Hills and the land westward towards Bree. Both Rudar and Cardolan desired to possess Amonsul, Weathertop, which stood on the borders of their realms. For the tower of Amonsul held the chief Palantir of the north and the other two were both in the keeping of Arthurdine. It was in the beginning of the reign of Malvegil of Arthurdine that evil came to Arnor. For at that time the realm of Angmar rose in the north beyond the Etten Moors. Its lands lay on both sides of the mountains, and there were gathered many evil men, and orcs, and other fell creatures. The lord of that land was known as the Witch King, but it was not known until later that he was indeed the chief of the Ringwraiths, who came north with the purpose of destroying the Dúnedain in Arnor, seeing hope in their disunion, while Goddor was strong. In the days of Argeleb, son of Malvegil, since no descendants of Isildur remained in the other kingdoms, the kings of Arthurdain again claimed the lordship of all Arnor, the claim was resisted by Rudar. There the Dúnedain were few, and power had been seized by an evil lord of the hillmen, who was in secret league with Angmar. Argaleb therefore fortified the Weather Hills, but he was slain in battle with Rudar and Angmar. Argaleg, son of Argaleb, with the help of Cardolan and Lindon, drove back his enemies from the hills and for many years Arthurdain and Cardolan held in force a frontier along the Weather Hills, the Great Road, and the Lower Horwell. It is said that at this time Rivendell was besieged. A great host came out of Angmar in 1409, and crossing the river entered Cardolan and surrounded Weathertop. The Dúnedain were defeated, and Arveleg was slain. The tower of Armonsul was burned and razed, but the Palantir was saved and carried back in retreat to Fornost. Rudar was occupied by evil men subject to Angmar, and the Dúnedain that remained there were slain or fled west. Cardolan was ravaged. Arafor, son of Arveleg, 
was not yet full grown, but he was valiant, and with aid from Círdan he had repelled the enemy from Fornost and the North Downs. A remnant of the faithful among the Dúnedain of Cardolan also held out in Tyre and Gorthat, the Barrow Downs, or took refuge in the forest behind. It is said that Angmar was for a time subdued by the elven folk coming from Linden and from Rivendell, for Elrond brought help over the mountains out of Lorien. It was at this time that the Stores that had dwelt in the Angle, between Horwell and Loudwater, fled west and south, because of the wars and the dread of Angmar, and because the land and clime of Eriador, especially in the east, worsened and became unfriendly. Some returned to Wilderland and dwelt beside the Glatton, becoming a riverside people of fishers. In the days of Argaleb II, the plague came into Eriador from the southeast, and most of the people of Cardolan perished, especially in Minhiriath. The hobbits and all other people suffered greatly, but the plague lessened as it passed northwards, and the northern parts of Arthurdine were less affected. It was at this time that an end came of the Dúnedain of Cardolan, and evil spirits out of Angmar and Rudar entered into the deserted mounds and dwelt there. It is said that the mounds of Tyre and Gorthad, as the Barrow Downs were called of old, are very ancient, and that many were built in the days of the old world of the First Age by the forefathers of the Adain, before they crossed the Blue Mountains into Beleriand, of which Lindon is all that now remains. Those hills were therefore revered by the Dúnedain after their return, and there many of their lords and kings were buried. Some say that the mound in which the ring-bearer was imprisoned had been the grave of the last prince of Cardolan, who fell in the war of 1409. In 1974, the power of Angmar arose again, and the Witch King came down upon Arthurdine before winter was ended. He captured Fornost and drove most of the remaining Dúnedain over the Loon. Among them were the sons of the King. But King Arvedwe held out upon the North Downs until the last, and then fled north with some of his guard, and they escaped by the swiftness of their horses. For a while, Arvedui hid in the tunnels of the old dwarf mines near the far end of the mountains, but he was driven at last by hunger to seek the help of the Lossoth, the snowmen of Thorhel. These are a strange, unfriendly people, remnant of the Florodwaith, men of far-off days, accustomed to the bitter colds of the realm of Morgoth. Indeed, those colds still linger in that region, though they lie hardly more than a hundred leagues north of the Shire. The Lossoth house in the snow, and it is said that they can run on the ice with bones on their feet and have carts without wheels. They live mostly inaccessible to their enemies, on the great Cape of Forhill that shuts off to the northwest to the immense bay of that name but they often camp on the south shores of the bay at the feet of the mountains. Some of these are Vedwe found in camp by the seashore, but they did not help the king willingly, for he had nothing to offer them save a few jewels which they did not value, and they were afraid of the witch king, who, they said, could make frost or thaw at his will. But partly out of pity for the gaunt king and his men, and partly out of fear of their weapons, they gave them a little food and built for them snow huts.